everybody, it's Deja Yetmir from CrochetEverAfter.com and today I am going to show you how to make one of my most popular free patterns, the Cirque Jewelry Crochet Pattern. I'm actually going to make this bracelet on the tutorial. So to get started, you're going to need a copy of the pattern, which you will see below. You'll see a link. Um, print that out or download it. You also need some worsted weight yarn in whatever color you like. Um, you might want to get a couple of colors if you want to try one of the variations that are in the pattern. You'll also need a USJ or 6mm crochet hook. And then the most important part that actually creates the circles, you're going to need some plastic rings. Now I like to use the Dritz brand. I'm going to show you a close-up of this in just a little bit so you can see this a little better. But um, the Dritz brand, you can usually find these in your local craft store in the sewing section where your notions are. And you can choose from a variety of sizes. My pattern will give you the actual sizes if you want to make the exact same um, necklaces or bracelets that you see here. For this actual bracelet I use the one and a half rings so if you want to make one just like me get some one and a half plastic rings and let's get started. Okay, so here is an up-close view, like I promised you, of the rings that I use. You can see I've gotten into these. Um, they are Dritz brand, and I think they're called like curtain rings, plastic curtain rings. They go by that also, but you can see that I have different sizes. I have a one inch here and a one and one and a half inch here. You can get just about any size you'd like. Whatever you want to make is perfectly fine, but this is just kind of a close-up so you know what to look for when you're at the store. So this is in the sewing section of your local craft store and um, where all of the notions are. Okay, I pulled a couple rings out of my package and I'm going to show you first how to start off your necklace or bracelet and how to join the first ring because every ring after is going to be the exact same way. So I start off with my yarn, take one of my rings, there's put the yarn through the center, if I can find the center, and tie a knot. I actually want a much shorter tail than I have going, so let me move my knot a little bit. You don't need a long tail because you're going to crochet it into your, your um, necklace or bracelet, so you can just pull it to make it nice and short. That's about all you need is like an inch, inch and a half. Actually this ring is an inch and a half, so maybe three quarters of an inch. And then to begin, it's almost like a magic adjustable loop. You're going to reach through the center of your ring, grab your yarn and pull it through. Then yarn over and just slip stitch it to get a nice base going. And you're trapping your tail in that slip stitch. Now the pattern says I'm going to do 12 single crochets and that's going to cover half of my ring. So to do those I go through the center of the ring again, grab my yarn by laying over, it's not really a full yarn over, I always call these a layover because it just lays over the top, catch it with my hook and pull it up, keep my tail out of my way, yarn over and pull through. Now what you're going to do instead of regular crochet where I would just leave this as it is to keep my stitches nice and bouncy is I'm going to tighten this down. I'm going to bring these all together, pull on my tail, tighten everything down because I want this ring completely covered. I don't want to be able to see the white through it. So to do that, do another single crochet. I'm going to tighten it down as much as I can and squish it all together. So I'm going to do that after each stitch. It's a little extra work, but it gives it a much nicer edge, and it keeps everything covered. So I'm at four single crochets. And as you can see, as I'm working, I'm trapping my tail so that I don't have to weave it in later because it's a little difficult with how tight my stitches are. So I'm only going to have to weave in one tail at the very end. Just keep single crocheting and tightening it down. And you can add more than 12 or less than 12 depending on the size of your ring. So if you're using rings that aren't um, indicated in my pattern, 
you have big, ginormous, you know, you could do this to a whole bracelet. You could get a bangle bracelet and um, do the same thing, just single crochet around the entire thing. Because it doesn't really matter what size it is because the yarn's going to go around it. You're just going to have the single crochet V's around the outside. Or you can move them around and make a, you know, a twisty. You can make a spiral with them if you wanted to. You can turn them however you like. Let me see how many I have so far. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So let me do four more. Then we'll go on to joining the next ring. You know, kind of tug straight down to get it tight and push it next to each other. Three and four. Okay, you can see I have half of my ring done. And now I'm ready to join my next ring. Notice I'm not going around the whole ring. That's the whole point of the no joins and no weaving in because I'm going to join it at the very end of adding all my rings. Now this join can also be um, changed. If you know how to crochet with beads, you can add a bead right here in between your next loop. You know, if you have beads um, on your yarn, you can push one down and sing and do a chain and have your bead right here in the chain and then add your next one. And then you have a bead in between each ring, which can be very cool. Um, what I do for this pattern is I chain two. So I chained one already and I chain another one. And that gives a nice, um, a nice little space between the rings. You can do no chains, you can do one chain, you can do five chains. You know, it, it's endless what you can do with this technique once you learn it. And feel free to do whatever you like. Whatever you see in my patterns, you can replicate, make your own, sell anything you make from this stuff. You can sell absolutely everything. Go to a craft fair and sell all these goodies. It's all good. I allow all of it to be sold. Just don't sell my pattern, please. So now we're going to join our next ring. Take your ring, just like the magic adjustable loop, reach through the center, grab your loop, bring it up, and you're actually just going to do your first single crochet. So yarn over and pull. And you'll see this one gets like really loose because you're just joining. So just keep tightening it down and keep it close to your chain. So there's the first one. So I'm going to do another 12 in this one, like I did with the first. And I'm going to keep joining rings the same way. I do 12 single crochets. And then I chain two or add a bead or chain one or whatever it is that you want to do to make these special and make these your own. It's all up to you. So I just keep going around until I make another 12 and then because I'm making a bracelet out of these I'm gonna add two more rings. So let me show you what it looks like after the two rings and then we'll join them up. Alright, I have now added all four rings. I have single crocheted 12 times in each side. As you can see, and I've done the chain twos in between. So now I'm at the last single crochet of this side. Now I'm going to join these up. Before I join them, I'm going to chain two. And that way when it's all joined, I'm still going to have even spaces through all of them. If I just joined it right now, I'd have a visible spot where there is no chain two. So chain two, and then I make sure that I'm not twisted before I join, and you can see my tail on this one was a little long, so I'm going to have to cut that off, but I'm going to bring it, make sure it's not twisted, and bring it together. Then I'm going to insert my hook into the center as before and yarn over and single crochet. And as you can see I have now joined my bracelet. Now I'm able 
to go down the next side. So make sure that you're inserting your hook in the correct way. If I inserted my hook through this side, I'm going to be crocheting over the spot I just crocheted. So bring them together. You can just fold them in half like that and make sure you come around the outside to join. Okay, this is a single crochet. Whoops, I lost it. Let me do that again. Bring them together through the outside and up. Single crochet, bring it tight, bring it close to the chain too and to the edge that I'm at. And then I'm going to single crochet 12 times on this side. I'm going to cut that extra piece of tail that I have there. And if you aren't paying attention to how many you're making, like me, you can either keep going until, you know, you get to the end and you feel you have enough covering everything, or just go back to where you joined. Here's my chain two. And then I can see that I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I need five more. I'll count this time so I can make sure I have the right amount. Here's two, three, four, and five. Alright, so my ring is full. I'm going to cut that tail and get rid of it. My ring is full. Now it's time to go on my next ring. I don't just skip my chains. I work into them. So however you want to do it, if you want to go under just the bottom bump or a couple bumps, totally up to you, but you're going to slip stitch. So you're going to put your hook through, yarn over, and just pull through to slip stitch. Slip stitch one, and slip stitch through again. I'm going through just one loop. These are a little bit difficult to insert into sometimes, because it's best to make a tighter chain just so it's not all loopy as your space goes. So there's my two slip stitches into my chain two and then just single crochet to start your next half round of ring. So you just keep going around and around and around till you get all the way to here. Okay, so I have continued single crocheting around each of my rings and I have slip stitched into each of my chain twos and now I'm on my last ring and I just have a couple more single crochets to go and then I'm going to join and fasten off so there are my last two I have enough to cover my ring next I'm going to slip stitch into my chain two make sure I'm not twisted when I do that There is one slip stitch. The second one is always the more difficult one to get into because it kind of tightens down once you join your ring. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to fasten off by yarning over, pulling that through and tightening it down. I'm just going to pull a little length of it. Grab my scissors. that off. Turn my light back on. Then I'm going to weave in. We always say weave in, but usually it's sew in. I just pulled the extra tail out. So pull that down. I still need to cut this off. But I'm going to thread my yarn needle, tapestry needle, whatever you have on hand. I like these with the little bent tip and I like metal so it doesn't bend as much but I like the bent tip because it's really easy to get it to go into the stitch and out of the stitch because it's curved. This one is kind of a small 
I, what I do to get this threaded is I just loop it over the needle and pinch it really tight and then slide it off and then use that pinched end to get inside of the needle there. And then I'm going to just sew my end in, make sure my whole thing is nice and straight. And I'm going to sew it into that first stitch that I made on the very first round. You can see that joins up nice. And then to get the end, I'm going to keep on kind of sewing my end in around here to get it nice and tight. And then what I can do, I can keep sewing or you can take just like the way you kind of worked in your first tail, you can um, just slip under, that's why I also like this bent needle because it kind of goes um, in a circular fashion, just like my ring. You can put it closer to where my actual yarn is at the moment. You can kind of push it through the center to hide it. Or you can go up through these single crochet, short for my tail here, up through the single crochets to hide it also. So you have a few different options of where you can weave in your end. Whatever is preferable and easy for you. If you don't have any needles, then what you can do is get a smaller hook. Don't use the same hook because it'll be a little difficult to enter. But you can kind of weave it back and forth along your single crochets by going back and forth, turning it, yarning over, pulling it through, turning it, putting it through the next stitch. If I had a smaller hook on me, this would be a lot easier to get into these stitches. But you can go back and forth until you get it weaved in enough that you're comfortable with. And then you can just clip off these ends. I kind of like to pull on it right before I cut it because then usually that extra end will kind of pop back in to be hidden. And then you have a finished bracelet. Or necklace or whatever you're making. And that is, I'll show you some um, variations right now, but that's about the gist of it. Okay, so once you're done, you'll have something that looks similar to this. This is a five ring bracelet. This is made, I think, in one and one eighth ring. Make sure before you join it also to try it on and make sure that it slides on easily because you cannot pull these apart to make it, you know, fit. It has to fit right away. So this is, um, just a smaller ring and I had to use five to be able to get around my wrist so that's why there's five instead of four same concept go around join and then go back around the other side other things that you can try are a dual color which I really like I started with the pink and I went around all of my rings and then I came to my join I chained two and then I switched to this taupe chocolatey color and then I went back down the other side in the new color. So that's kind of a neat two-tone um, necklace that this became. Another option, hold two different colors together as you work the entire thing. This I also did different size rings. So you can see that I used, I think it's like um, one and a half and one inch rings. So if you're finding that 12 stitches is a little much for a smaller ring, just do less. Especially when you're holding two, um, two yarns together, it's going to take less to cover. So let's see, I did 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. All I did was 7 on this ring. Let's see if I did 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So I did 10. So it changes depending on what kind of yarn you're holding. As long as you get enough to cover your ring and it covers half the side, then that's all you need to do. And this is kind of a cool effect that this gives using two colors used at once. So the options are limitless. Um, you could even just do a couple rings and then chain a big long chain to put around your neck or um, 
you know, do a, a chain on one on both sides and tie it around your neck. You know, there's lots of different ways that you can do this. So have fun with it. Um, leave me comments if anything's unclear, and I'll try to help you out. And have a great time.